introduce uh, our next speaker, uh, Dr. Richard Bebb, Clinical Assistant Professor of Medicine at UBC. He's a leading expert and a terrific clinician, I must say, in the field of endocrinology with a special interest in testosterone and testosterone replacement. Uh, he works at St. Paul's Hospital and is going to talk to us this evening on testosterone deficiency in men, or what we call hypogonadism. Richard. Thanks, Larry, and thank you. Um, I started off uh, with 150 slides, and I cut it down to 23. You'll be happy to know I can stay on time. And uh, we do have uh, time afterwards for questions, and I'm sure there'll be lots. So um, I'm talking about testosterone deficiency or hypogonadism, for those of you who are wondering what the term was mentioned earlier in with uh, some, of our, some of our talks. And I'm going to go back a little bit and just give you a little biology of what, what this hormone is and, and, and how, it, how it fits in. It's just a graph you can see on your screen. Up here at the top is the hypothalamus, the pituitary, that's part of your brain. And it produces hormones, in this case LH and FSH, which find their way through a man's bloodstream to the testicle and tell the testicles to produce sperm, and in this case testosterone over here. And then there's a feedback loop up to the pituitary. And testosterone is a, is a hormone that's been around for many, many, many years. Uh, we knew it was there before we knew what, what the hormone was, and we're still investigating the effects that it has on the body. It's produced in the wee hours of the night, in the early morning, and it peaks, as you can see in this graphic, around 8 o'clock in the morning in, in younger men, and then dwindles as the day goes down, and it goes through this cycle. And you can see here, in young men, it's got quite a marked difference between the morning and later in the day. And in older men, the absolute level has dropped, and this circadian diurnal variation has, has been ironed out. So there's a lot less circulating testosterone have its effect in the body. Now most, most people, if you ask them, what does testosterone do, <clears throat> they'd say something about, uh, about libido, sexual function, or muscles. And everyone knows about testosterone use, or I should say abuse, in professional sports, which is unfortunate. But it has a lot of very important effects more so than, than just sexual function and testosterone. And it really, it affects the entire body one way or the other, from the brain, your skin, it affects the liver, the kidneys, it affects uh, bone. You heard uh, a lovely talk on, on osteoporosis, and not just the bone itself, but within the bone, the bone marrow, where we, uh, where we produce our, our red blood cells. And then there's the effects on, uh, on the uh, prostates and, and sexual function as well, which uh, Dr. Elliott will uh, talk, uh, talk about in the final talk. Now, there's <clears throat> lots of different reasons why a man may be low in testosterone. It can be a problem with the pituitary and the brain, the testicles, or both. Or it can be related to a number of diseases that can affect uh, the production of, of testosterone. In the graphic before you, this, this shows age-related reduction in testosterone. Now, testosterone doesn't always drop as many age. There are some men who age very successfully, for reasons we're not quite sure, and have robust, healthy, adult, young male levels when they're in 70s. But in general, there's a drop that occurs. And it's not just a drop in the blood levels. You can see here, if you follow the cursor on the graphic, where total testosterone levels trend down as we age, this being uh, uh, in, in, in the 20s and 30s, up to the 80s or 90s in men. But there's a little protein called SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin, which acts as a, a carrier protein or a sponge, if you will. And the level tends to go up as men age. And it, and it takes a lot of the testosterone out of circulation and drops the amount that's effective and able to circulate around and have its effect on the body. So the net effect of these two phenomena, the drop of total testosterone and the increase in binding globulin, is a decrease in free or unbound testosterone. Or what's perhaps a variant of that, and I think a better measure of testosterone effect, the bioavailable testosterone, which we can talk a bit more in, in question period. So how common is low testosterone? Uh, I don't have any US or Canadian get data for you. This is, this is American data. And it was estimated in 2003 that up to 5 million men in the United States are low in testosterone. And sadly, 5% of them are treated. So similar to our, our treatment of osteoporosis in men, we, we don't fully address the problem. It's a minority of men who, who are, uh, are dealt with uh, for this, this health concern. 
So when you're low in testosterone, I showed you the graphic of the effects throughout the body. So what then would occur to a man if the testosterone level were to drop? Lots of symptoms can occur. One of the key things is fatigue. Fatigue is a tough thing for us physicians because everything causes fatigue. And so if you have fatigue as a symptom, do you know, is it your liver, your kidneys, or something else, or diabetes? It can be lots of things. But fatigue is very, pro very uh, prominent in testosterone deficiency. Uh, the men will also report quite often the low libido. Interest in sex can decrease or be completely absent. Um, mood can change, so this uh, issue about grumpy old men uh, may clearly be related to testosterone in, in certain situations. Uh, the uh, effect also occurs on body composition. As we age, we gain fat and we lose lean body mass. And some of those changes are occurring in concert with dropping testosterone levels and may be more than a casual association. It actually may be causative as we lose testosterone with aging. So clinically, when we see patients, we like to have three things to wrap this up so we know that low testosterone is the issue. First of all, that the men have symptoms of low testosterone or signs, that they have a blood test confirming their levels are low, and then if we restore by giving testosterone, we restore the level to a normal healthy level that the symptoms that were there are dissipated and therefore we have the right diagnosis. This is a short story of this. It gets quite a lot more complex and we'll talk about that and exactly how you measure testosterone is controversial. We're very fortunate here in British Columbia to have good ways of, of measuring testosterone and uh, more sophisticated than elsewhere in, in Canada.